I got a full team of legendary proportions right here. It may not be much, but this is something. This one is from a from a file long gone. And yes, <laughs> I don't I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Legendaries are the focus today. Yeah. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to part 85 of Pokemon Sword. So on the last time with Pokemon Sword, we uh, did things. <laughs> yes, we most certainly did things. Uh, oh, wait, we read the lead card. <laughs> How could I forget? How could I forget that? We read all the lead cards of all the important characters, thus bringing these gym leaders, these rivals, and these champions characters to close. Today... Uh, you may have noticed that we've gotten a whole bunch of legendaries. So what do you do with a select few of them? Well, you head to Stow on Site, of course. Yeah, would you think that Stow on Site would be the very last place you would expect to do some legendary stuff in? Well, joke's on you, because this is where you need to be. <laughs> I dug out some mysterious items, but I got no clue how they work. Maybe you can find some use for them, kid. Why don't you take them? For Necrozma, you get an N Solarizer. You get an N, N New Lunarizer. And yeah, let's just get the items all at once. For showing them Kyurem, you get the DNA Splicers. How did this guy get this device created by Team Plasma? I have no idea. But what I do know is that for Latios or Latias, you get the Soul Dew. Uh, so I can explain this one right away. So originally, it was meant to boost the special defense and speed, I believe, of Latios and Latias. However, that's not necessarily the case anymore. When this item is held by Latios or Latias, the power of its dragon type and psychic type moves get boosted. So... It's got a bit of a nerf, but, you know, it's fine. It's whatever. The Adamant Orb. This is to be held by Dialga, and it and it boosts the power of Dragon and Steel-type moves. So it can be very good for a Pokemon like Dialga. The Lustrous Orb, which is basically the counterpart, it boosts the power of Water and Dragon-type moves of Palkia when it's held by Palkia. And the Greasiest Orb, which is the far more interesting one. When Giratina holds this orb, it not only boosts the power of Dragon and Ghost-type moves, but it also does something else entirely. For showing Tornadus, Landorus, or, Thunder or Thunderous, you get the Reveal Glass. So this is meant to be used on uh, Tornadus, Thunderous, and Landorus. And the Zygarde Cube. This is you. This is an item that needs to be used on Zygarde. With it, you can change Zygarde's forms and abilities. And uh, unfortunately, though, I don't have the Pokemon Genesect. If you had the, if you had a, a what? If you have a Genesect, then the man will give you. Four drives. Douse, Chill, Shock, and I believe the Burn Drive, I think it's called. With those drives, you can change the type of the move called Technoblast, which is Genesect's signature move. But anyway, now onward to the excrement. So, the excrement of today is finding out what the heck to do with all these legendary Pokemon and their items in order to boost their moves. So, it's basically just like I said. The Adamant Orb is meant to be given to Dialga. This will boost the power of Dialga's Dragon and Steel-type moves. So, all that's well and good and all. And then, there's Palkia's Lustrous Orb. That will boost the power of Palkia's Water and Dragon-type moves. 
And the far more interesting one of the bunch is the Greasiest Orb. And with that, Giratina has changed into the origin form. So the item description lied. Well, partially. While it does boost the power of dragon type and ghost type moves, it also allows Giratina to transform into its origin form, which is basically the more offensive of the two forms. The regular form, which is the altered form, is the more defensive of the two, and origin form is the more offensive of the two. It basically switches attack and attack and defensive stats. But still, Giratina's origin form is really cool. Like, it's so cool. <laughs> it's like a big, gigantic snake and everything. It's got those wings on the back of it. It's so cool. It's really cool. And it being the star of Pokemon Platinum, it's definitely no exception to that whatsoever. Right. So... Now, what to do about that Zygarde cube? Well, I believe it's a key item. Uh, according to the items. Yep. It's a key item. So with this, you'll be able to change Zygarde's forms as well as the ability. So there's no need for an ability patch whatsoever. So Zygarde's abilities are Aura Break and power construct and this will and changing forms will allow you to only change between zygarde's 10 percent form and zygarde's 50 percent 50 percent form i said present which is definitely not what it is at all so you're probably asking yourself what the heck am i doing well power construct is an ability that needs to activate whenever Zygarde is at 50% or lower health. And thus allowing it to transform into Zygarde Complete. Zygarde Complete is an absolute monster. Because... It has basically three signature moves that I'm completely forgetting. Or, or I I, rem I know what they are. I know what they are. They just... They just... Uh, I just don't have them on Zygarde right now. <laughs> so, it's kind of weird seeing me, you know, being all like, Hey, look at this really, really cool Pokemon that they never used in video gaming history. That this Pokemon is really cool. However... However, it's really dumb that they delegated this to a side quest. However, here are the signature moves, which honestly they're all you need on uh they're all you need on Zygarde to be perfectly honest. Yes, they're honestly all you need. And very thankfully Zygarde basically heals itself upon you know re-entering battle, so that's pretty cool. First of which, Thousand Arrows. Thousand Arrows basically prevents, basically, well, well, there is a Thousand Arrows right there. I'll explain its effects when we next get into a battle. However, I do know what Core Enforcer does. So, next up is the Core Enforcer, which, honestly, it's a very cool move, but it's really, it's more cool if, if uh, these, if Zygarde Complete is using it. All right, Thousand Arrows. Uh, the Pokemon that gets targeted by this move will be knocked down to the ground, so any flying types will be just on the ground. Or act like as they're on the ground. Anyway, Core Enforcer, look at this! Z! <laughs> so, if, if the Pokemon being hit by Core Enforcer is hit, well, obviously, it has to be hit in order for it to work. It basically renders the target's ability useless. Like, this move is so cool that the anime had to carry it. Like, 
Okay, so the one condition, though, uh, the one condition is that the the target needs to already use up their moves. So, yeah, or rather use their moves at least once, I believe. I'm not sure entirely how it works, but here it is. Thousand Waves. This move prevents a Pokemon from escaping. So you can already tell Zygarde is underutilized and broken as heck. Truly underutilized. But uh, yeah, Zygarde can transform in between in between the 10% uh, form, which is the dog, and 50% uh, form, which is the uh, regular being that you see right here and right now. Seriously. Seriously. Whenever we get to Pokemon X and Y, whenever I have the audacity, whenever I have the flat-out nerve to cover Pokemon X and Y, I will absolutely, absolutely have words for you. I will have words for you, Zygarde, because you're not the concern. You are absolutely not the concern right now. Let's just say you're a useless sack that unfortunately got shafted by the biggest shafting possible. Anyway, our next uh, experimental phase is Necrozma. So we got this item, right? It's called the End Solarizer and End Lunarizer. So regard so you ne only need to have Necrozma if you want to get these two items. So you need to use this item on Necrozma, but not only that, you need to select either Solgaleo or L Lunala depending on which item you're using. So you need to use the Solarizer for Solgaleo and you need to use the Lunarizer for uh, Lunala. And with that, Necrozma will transform into Dusk Main, into Dusk Main Necrozma or Necrozma, whichever one. Uh, Necroz, I'm just going to say Necrozma, honestly, to be more precise. So, uh, Dawn, Dusk Main Necroz, Necrozma is a very special Pokemon and is one of the two main mascots of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. The other being Dawn Wings Necrozma. And this is basically a fusion between Necrozma and the two legendary Pokemon of Sun and Moon, Sogaleo and Lunala, respectively. And Necrozma gains... And since this Pokemon acts like Necrozma, it has all of Necrozma's moves, including uh, Sogaleo's Sunsteel Strike and Lunala's uh, Moongeist Beam. It also gains the, the respective stats of Necrozma and Lunala, respectively. Uh, Duskmane being the more physical of the two, Donwings being the more special of the two. You seriously can't go wrong with these. You really, really can't go wrong. Because not only that, but they change typing as well. Necrozma will be Psychic Steel. And with Dawn Wings, it will be Psychic Ghost. Honestly, Psychic Steel would be the better at the two. Because, once again, you have very little in the way of weaknesses. But seriously, Necrozma really is the king when it comes to Ultra Beasts. Because it can fuse with that with Sogaleo and Lunala and can just deal so much damage. It might not have its Ultra Burst form anymore, but still, Necrozma is the king. All right, so next thing's next. We have Kyurem and Reshiram and Zekrom. So I have absolutely no idea how this dude got a device that was originally designed by Team Plasma. But that's okay, because we can use this to fuse Kyurem with either Reshiram or Zekrom. And thus, we have birth of white and black Kyurem. 
So, Black and White Kyurem are the main mascots of Pokemon Black and White 2. Originally, Kyurem was one Pokemon, and yet they split. Depending on which version, you either have Black Kyurem in Pokemon Black 2, or White Kyurem in Pokemon White 2. And... I hate to say this, but Kyurem as White Kyurem outclasses Reshiram in almost every way possible. Once again, just like with Duskmane and Dawn Wings, uh, you either have the more physical of the two or the more special of the two, with White Kyurem being the more special of the two. Not only that, though, but once again, you gain the signature moves of uh, Reshiram and Zekrom as well, with White Kyurem gaining Fusion Flare and uh, Black Kyurem gaining Fusion Bolt. Not only that, though, but you have exclusive exclusive uh, uh, signature moves to both Black and White Kyurem. White Kyurem can learn Ice Burn, which is an Ice-type special 140 nine power 90 accuracy move that can sometimes leave the target with a burn. Free Shock is an Ice-type physical 140 power 90 accuracy move that can sometimes leave the target with paralysis. Seriously, there is very little someone can do if stand if you're going to stand up against black and white Kyurem. The only thing that I have to say though is that um is that no matter what you do, Kyurem will never get rid of its type. It's always going to be Dragon Ice forever. So, that's a little bit unfortunate because once again, Ice type is the worst defensive typing in the game because it just has so many weaknesses. But honestly, if you can get around that, if you can really, really get around that, Black and White Kyurem can be really good assets in terms of legendary Pokemon. Alright, so with that, you'd think we would be almost done, and in fact, we almost are. In fact, I think we just have one more piece of information or one more piece of business to actually go with now that we have thoroughly gone over like transformations and stuff which we're still not done with transformations because transformation the transformation things never die using the reveal glass on the forces of nature aka tornadus thunderous and landorus you have access to the therian forms of tornadus thunderous and landorus so, Therian forms. It's actually kind of interesting. So, for the Therian forms of Thunderous, Tornadus, and Landorus, I believe they don't necessarily change type no matter what. No, they don't. It doesn't seem like they do. So, while they do keep their type and all of Pure Flying, Electric Flying, and Ground Flying respectively... Uh, you get the feeling that Tornadus and Thunderous benefit the most from Therian forms because they just gain speed. They gain even more speed, which is always good because in competitive, you always want to be moving first unless your team is built around slow Pokemon. The only thing, though, is that, well, in terms of Tornadus anyway, it loses attack and special attack, which is kind of unfortunate. And I believe this is... No. It's not in the case with Thunderous, actually. Because while it loses speed, it gains so much special attack that it can be a very, very amazing special attacker. All because of the moves it can learn, too. So, while all that's, while all that's very well and good, I think people still do prefer the base forms, honestly. Because it doesn't really benefit Tornadus or Landorus in a way. It could benefit... It could very well benefit uh, Thunderous, though. And in fact, Landorus actually gets a boost in physical attack as well. However, that 91 speed you're going to have to work around with. So many people often would like to use the regular forms of Tornadus, Thunderous, and Landorus when it came to the Gen 5 competitive scene. However, they're there if you want to use them, and it feels really good using them. 
So once again, I feel like I need to stress the fact that in order to use in, um, in order to use these, you need to have the proper legendary Pokemon. And very thankfully, I transferred most of these legendary Pokemon from home. So that's extremely fortunate. Very, very fortunate that I was actually able to, to have most of these Pokemon from home. The only one that I had to catch was uh, Giratina. And even then... Even then, uh, it didn't take me that long at all in the max layers. It only took me like a couple of tries, but eventually I did do it. So that's awesome. And I think these Pokemon are going to go to a great home. Just being stuck in these boxes forever. <laughs> Unless I start another playthrough, which knowing me, I'm going to very likely do. So there you go. There you go. It's... Going to be quite a trip for these legendary Pokemon, indeed. So, anyway, um, you might think that we're done here, but even even though that was technically the main focus of the video... Uh, no. Well, okay, because something actually does change up at the Isle of Armor. So, do you remember Clara, right? Of course you remember Clara, because she is Clara. You can never forget Clara at all. Well, now that you completed the Galarian Star Tournament, her team actually has changed up quite a bit. And it's like I said, this is just purely a demonstration of how these, these have changed. So, along with Milo at the Galarian Star Tournament, or the Champion Cup Tournament, actually... Clara's team has actually changed up quite a bit. So now her slow poke has fully evolved into Galarian Slow King. And this Pokemon is level 68, Poison Psychic type, curious for its ability, curious medicine for its ability, and it has uh, Scald, Eerie Spell, Rock Power Gem, and Blizzard. Please tell me I have animations. I, I actually I think I do. Yes, I do. So, I will have Agron do something, because it's battle debut, AGG Ron do something. Because it's battle debut wasn't really that great. So, of course, by the end of this, I'll have Avery's rematch team on screen, as you can clearly see. Weezing, level 68, poison fairy type, levitate for its ability. And it has toxic, heat wave, protect, and strange steam. On the note of the Curious Medicine ability, it's the signature move of Galarian Slow King. And basically what that means is, whenever Galarian Slow King enters a battle, stat stages of the ally Pokemon are reduced to zero. Or rather, they're reset to zero. So, that's that could be huge for teams that have to rely on stats or baton passes. Drapion! This might be a new acquisition, actually, I think. Yes, it is. Drapion, level 68, poison dark type, battle armor for its ability. And it has uh, all attacking moves, actually, so avalanche will work out great. X scissor, poison fang, crunch, and ice fang. So that Nevermelt Ice is going to definitely help out with this one a lot. It was actually kind of a good move on my part for, for Avalanche on this. Because no matter what, Agron is going to be slow. So, that's fortunate. That's very fortunate indeed. Scolipede. This is level nice. Uh, bug poison type. Poison point for its ability. And it has smart strike. Poison jab, mega horn, and protect. I'm going to do double edge because, you know... Since I have Rockhead for my ability, the recoil damage is nothing. So do it, Mega Horn. That's okay. That's fine. Do it. Almost. Almost. Okay, fine. You're going to do all physical moves on me. That's fine. That's cool. Die. 
Thank you. And finally, you should probably know what her last Pokemon is going to be. Still not pulling any punches, I see. Not that I care or anything, Baka! Galarian Slowbro. Her ace always, her ace always will be. It's level 70. Poison Psychic type quick draw for its ability. And it has Scald, Shell Sidearm, Focus Blast, and Psychic. Um, I'm going to get the heck out of Dodge. I'm going to get the heck out of Dodge for Dawn. Because, you know, all of her moves are special. And they will be uh, devastating on, uh, you know, a GG Ron. Thank you, Boost. What you gonna do, Max uh, Knuckle? All right. I see. That doesn't matter to you anyway. Uh, we're going Dragon Dance. We're going D Dance. D Dance. So hopefully that Dragon Claw can be powered up. All right, fine. Okay, that I want actually, uh, is actually, uh, okay. Uh, Dragon Claw, please. What? Quick draw, of course. Your Pokemon will look so much cuter once I get a nice, give the nice coat of Venom. Yes. Ah. That's great, mate. Okay. Quick draw. Whatever you do, don't. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. AGG Ron got to level 87. Now she's gym leader, Clara. Okay, that's cool. Oh, come on. What a drag. But I guess it was also kind of fun. Ha-ha. <laughs> yes. Woo. As strong as ever. But I think I'm beginning to get it. Hey, thanks for helping me out. No problem. No problem. I just kind of wanted to do something a little bit extra. Now that we had the opportunity. <laughs> However, regardless of what I say or what I do next, uh, it will be time for us to say goodbye to Galar. I know our time here has been much longer than anybody could have ever hoped to be. Because, would you know what? This game actually does have content. You know? I'm just saying. It does. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> But, yeah, I believe the next one will be it. And I will have the final word in saying that I defeated Leon again. Hopefully I will, because our rematch, our battle, will be legendary. Next time on Pokemon Sword, we end all of this. Our adventures in Galar are coming to an end. And I think I did pretty good for myself in showing off that Galar probably shouldn't be hated. Anyway, I will see you guys on the next time. Take a look at me as I spin. Look at me as I go with the camera. It's like I'm glued to the camera. See you guys on the next time. Thank you for watching. And good boy.